we're competitive again. Um, it's not like the days of, of the 90s uh, when I would first go out there, I'd drive over to Williams WMS at California Avenue in Roscoe, and then I'd go across the street, visit another customer, Creators, which they make the popcorn, man you know, they're the popcorn machine manufacturer. And then I'd drive out and talk to the guys at Data East, you know, Joe Balser, and then, then I'd just drive around the corner and, and see the guys at uh, Premier, uh, see Ray Tanzer when he was there, um, a couple others. I could just, you know, go back and forth to all the different manufacturers, and everybody knew what side of their bread was buttered on, and knew I wasn't going to, hey, these guys are working on this. You can't wait to see it. It, just, it was just a thing. Now. Um, a lot of them, well, back then too, they would pull us aside and, I got an idea for this. Can we do this? Like uh, Billy Parker. Yeah. Uh, sure. Oh, yeah. You know, we got the old Jurassic Park, the original. That, that one, we got called into the into class, uh, into the principal's classroom. Oh, they yeah, are, that's a great story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gary Stern called, uh, they were just ready to release the, the movie, Jurassic Park. He had seen a, uh, a early, preview. early preview, called us all in there, and uh, we're having problems with this, this, and this. And one of the problems was our motor wasn't holding up. We were the left-right motor on the, on the T-Rex. And they pretty much read all the suppliers. You get with our engineers, get this fixed. I want a pinball machine in every theater across the country, so it's there and ready to go, and I don't want any problems, and it was, yes sir, yes sir. Turned out it had nothing to do with our motor. The, uh, s the slot was too short, and the motor would coast and hit the end of the slot, and then the pinion drive and the output gear would break. So we just had to reposition the switches and uh, lengthen the slot, and the problem went away. And it was, it's been flawless ever since. We don't, we don't get a, a whole lot of those. But uh, I don't know where I'm at, uh, getting ahead of myself and getting stories. I mean, we got a ton of stuff up here that we can well, show off. Why don't you I start with know. a little bit of history, because we've been jumping okay. all over. Why don't yeah, you start off Yeah, we're all over. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> know what to talk about. Rob was just, you've got to speak this year. Now I know why. Thank you again. It's a, it is an absolute <laughs> honor. And I was just going to leave it up to the group uh, to, to let me know after we, you know, give you some history of multi. And uh, let me know what you want to want to hear about. I brought parts. I brought spec sheets. I brought drawings. Um, you know, just some neat things. So a multi products company was started by my dad and three other guys in Racine, Wisconsin. Two of the brothers, uh, they were three brothers, the Langley brothers, Alan Jack. They were at Motor Research, so if you've ever dug into a really old pinball, that was, it's usually a Motor Research motor, which our open frame is basically a direct copy of that. Motor Research was a direct copy of the electric motor company. We can, the design of the Reset motor, the score reset motor is right there. This is probably from 1930, uh, 30s. My dad uh, worked at that company after he worked at uh, Nash. He would drive the cars off of, in Kenosha, drive the cars off of the line, cinch them down onto the rail cars so they could be transported across the country. Then he got a job at the electric motor company, then a job at Motor Research and left there with uh, two of the Langer brothers uh, who used to be tool makers at Motor Research doing the tooling and, uh, and uh, made multi-products company. And then uh, two of the brothers, uh, third brother joined in. He was a draftsman. Then uh, a couple of them passed away, one retired, and then my dad had it all, all to himself. How did uh, Grandpa get involved in the pinball industry? Well, it was just from motor research. It was just the customer base. Uh, you know, that was the, the main uh, user of it. I mean, we're not just in pinball. 
We uh, manufactured motors for tennis ball machines, popcorn poppers, hot dog rollers. Agricultural sprayers. Eight, yep, sprayers. Um, so, but the lion's share of the business back then in the 50s was coin-op and jukeboxes and pinball and shooting games, which, Rob, I have, I've got your three motors in my office still. I'll get to them <laughs> eventually. I'll get to them eventually. This was obviously uh, way before solid state electronics. Yes, yeah, all, all electromechanical. You know, just the discs would actuate the switches and then uh, the motors would turn them. And that design uh, was really, and still is, well liked. Um, the last time that motor, well, a motor like that that we currently have, um, Stern used it in the Beatles. Uh, pinball that they just had a few years back, uh, the spinner motor, the, the 45 disc in the middle of the, of the game was basically uh, that motor, but just the modern version. So, what was it like when solid state electronics first came onto the market, and obviously, well, things we, changed drastically. Well, we just thought it was. My dad thought it was the death of of motors in pinball because they didn't need a motor anymore to reset anything. It was all done electronically. Then it started, you know, yeah, it was pretty much a dry spell in the mid, early 70s when it first came out. And then uh, the motor started migrating to the play field and the action in the play field. So that's where we saw our revival. And it really ramped up in the, the late 80s and early 90s, 91, 2, 3. Um, we had two motors in Adam's family. So in eight months, we had to put out, well, there was 25,000 games, I believe there was, in about an eight, hmm? 20,000 20, games of Adam's family. And that was just one game that we were supplying two motors per game in an eight or nine month period. Uh, so that we were working <laughs> late nights, we'd, we'd worked all day go home for a couple hours, come back for about four or five more hours and do it all again. Just making motors for the, uh, I don't know if oh yeah, we oh, got it up here, the, the hand motor. So yeah, it's, it's been in engineering. I grabbed it out of engineering. Um, I don't know if you guys want to pass it around. Um, but all, all my guys on. have taken it apart. Literally. And as we're, the uh, documentation uh, that we did back in the 90s and even before wasn't very good. It was, hey, do this one like you did on spec number this, and do use an output shaft from this. And then so now when we're making, we'll make 25 or 50 at a time for Marco, and they got to make it again, and they're going to grab the, grab the hand out of, out, of, uh, out of engineering, and uh, we'll make parts, but now we have them drawn. Every gear has a part number, every pinion, every shaft, casting, every single part has a part number. They can be duplicated, and, and so we're a whole lot more modern than we used to. Um, any questions? Oh boy, I'm not intimately familiar with that, but I know we've had some double stacked motors. Okay. Mm. Yeah, those were either because we needed twice the power than what a, a single stack could do, or they needed it to reverse. That was more often than not. We'd put one coil in one way and another coil in reversed. They would run the same rotor and then we could get the, the reversing action. Um, because the original, well, there's, a, there's another brain child that we had, but uh, the original, was the reversing was the wound reversibles where they, we'd have these, the copper shading ring is what determines the direction that it rotates. They would have two coils, little miniature coils wound up on either side and then they would short the coils to determine the direction the motor would go in. 
very labor intense uh, and the wire was so fine that it would break half the time just in shipping to get it to the, to the um, customer. So then they would just double stack, put a coil in this way, coil in that way, double stack them. So that's, that's the, the brainchild of those. In fact, that's what Rob sent me. He's got uh, a couple of those reversing motors. That I wouldn't be intimate with. Um, maybe in the early, early stages, there yeah, might have been some. I ask because almost every graphic part I play, the left leg doesn't work. Oh, OK. And so that. My, my son has one, and it shows me the motion that it takes to actually work. OK. Yeah, yeah. I don't know at, uh, you know how many got on. That would be a, a stern or at that time, it was Data East. So. Sure. Uh, so since you mentioned Marco, uh, what is your current policy about uh, rebuilds and repairs? Do you want in certain intermediaries to bring them to you? Uh, yeah, we prefer to go. There was a time where we'd go, yeah, send it in, we'll repair it. And we would just get too backlogged. No, yeah. we've, <laughs> we've gone to uh, Steve Young. Steve Young does repairs. He'll, if you send him a motor, um, he'll take it apart, see what's wrong. If he has a part, he'll fix it and send it back to you. Or if he has to get a part from us, then I send him the part. Because um, it just, uh, like I said, we make about 150 to 175,000 motors a year. Uh, so doing one here, one or there, it gets a little, uh, uh, drags us down. But as far as parts sales, we don't want to become competitors with our own customer. Uh, so, like when Stern, we'll tell everybody, go back to Stern unless Stern says otherwise, or Stern is now working with Marco to distribute their, their product. But if it's in current production, for sure, I'm not going to sell it, you know, even onesies, twosies, or have it on, a, on the shelf. Um, so, yeah, I just don't want to get in competition. And then Marco and other, um, we got Pinball, Pinball Life. Life and mad, they're, yeah, they're more it. intimate with the industry and who needs what and what levels to have that at. So we'll just, I'd rather sell 25 or 50 or, or 100 of whatever to uh, them and let them distribute and answer questions. Because we just don't, I'm not that intimate with. Yeah, we would be with swamped with how, many, with how many requests we get in on a daily, weekly basis. We, that's all we'd have to have dedicated people only doing repairs and uh, doing doing that full time. Yeah, and there there was a time where when we were doing uh, repairs, and I got to a point where I was like, "Oh, Stern, you know, sorry, I, I can't ship this week because I'm working on a repair for Chuck E. Cheese," and then I was like, "What? That is completely backwards," and uh, so <laughs> we had to find other ways to do it. And Steve Young has been great. I've sent him a lot of tooling so he can do uh, stamping. I'll send him castings, um, you know, updates that we've made, removing the, the, the oil plates, things like that. Um, yeah. So he's, he's really stepped up and, and taken a load off of us. And then there's even uh, motors that are not pinwheel related but used other, other places. That uh, that we can uh, they can repair. So yeah, for Who jukeboxes knows? as well as arcade games, uh, Bay Tech is a another big customer of ours as well. Yeah. So question in the back. I saw a hand go up. tell you right now, I checked it this morning, Stern Pinball is our number one customer right now. Wow, they jumped up the list. They are. They, have, they have been hovering for many years, around 10, 12, um, but this past year, they have just, you know, gone to five, and then today, this morning, they are our number one customer so far this year. Um, big reason for that, 
I would say the one of the biggest ones is uh, for um, Jurassic Park, the anniversary. Yeah, the, the anniversary, um, because they're putting the shaker motors, you know, that's the shaker motor that uh, started out. Um, they were going to ship 5,000 of those by the end of the month. Um, yeah. And we've got, that's a lot. yeah, they're just going through those like crazy. Um, and just buying motors for all the different things. And they, they've been using a motor that we've been importing from Taiwan. Uh, we started that maybe about 10 years ago. Uh-oh, he's lifting the kimono. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's okay. It's, it's stories because I like to see what's happening here is Taiwan used to be here. You could, I can send you this motor for X. See, that's where I'm going to keep that. All right. <laughs> I don't want to, I can't. However, that X now, because of strained Taiwan and China relations, that X is like four times what it was just 10 years ago. And I can't, if I add on my profit margin, they're just, it's becoming unaffordable for third. So now they're starting to come back to us and buy the motors that are my gearbox, and obviously the DC is imported. Um, sometimes they buy AC, but rarely. It's more for the spinner, which is essentially this. So and that's what I'm really excited about is, is Stern is coming back and buying the one that we manufacture. So it's kind of we're excited about that. So this guy over here had a question. Uh, that um, about two, the brush life on average depending upon its use, is about 2,000 hours. And those brushes in there aren't, uh, aren't replaceable. Like the first edition that we used to get, um, I think the very first one we put a shaker in was for Williams for Earth Shaker, if I remember right. And we used to have to mill a flat on each end of the, and it just, you know, we were just doing, okay, it was weird because we had no automation stuff back then. It was weird. Back when labor was cheap. Yeah, yeah. Dad could pay me minimum wage and I was just milling. <laughs> so that was my idea to put the drill points in because I you can put it in a fixture and drill and drill and uh, use cobalt spotting drill and they go pretty quick now. Um, I don't even know. Oh, I know where I was going with that. So 2,000 hours on the brush life on average is what we say. Are they meant to have uh, weight swinging on them in the bottom of a pinball? I don't know. Like that, interestingly, uh, that particular DC motor, if you open up one of your vacuum cleaners, the beater bought a brush motor from the vacuum cleaner, and they buy about 20,000 a year. And about a third of them make it into shaker motors, the other of them go into agricultural sprayers. Ball valve actuators for a ball valve. for a pool sprayer. Yep. So that's just fun, fun little interesting. So and depending upon game play, Earth Shaker was only I think if I remember right, it was only during multi ball or the heart shape and every here and there. In Harley, it was every time the the, the speakers revved up, the, the motor was going. So those wore out quickly. You know, it depends upon game play. Fun stuff. Uh, what else do we got here? I, yeah, spec sheets. You know, like when we're uh, going to where you're going to. Right, here we go. This is the Some vintage documentation. Yeah, vintage documentation. I'll send that on around. That was when Zofia Bill was uh, at Williams uh, when we started doing the Popeye. Motor for the Popeye game. So we always have notes on there. That's for Sophia Bill for Popeye. Wants it to work out. Um, I think the other one, let's see, we. You sure he gets that back or your Popeye getting another gun night again? Yeah, no, it will. It will because now up here it'll say when it goes to production, it'll, it'll have a production number on it. And then they'll, uh, so that, that spec sheet will work. But, uh, this one is Doctor Who, uh, the Dalek motor. Uh, yeah, the, the Dalek is what brings us up and down. 
And then we had an oscillator up in the top on the thumb of the placement for the back clamping. So, but yeah, I can, I can thumb through there and, and there was like, I saw Billy Parker and um, George Gomez was that little one. working with George Gomez. Oh boy, this is back when I was just starting out with my dad and I went to a trade show and Bromley, Warren Bromley, Bromley Incorporated was working with there. He wanted to make a game that uh, flew a helicopter and it would come around and had a little thing hanging off of it and it would tag back and forth, but he wanted the helicopter to actually fly. So I took that oh, that's one of thing. these DCs. Hmm? Oh. Yeah, one of these DCs, and then I put an eighth inch shaft on it, sent it to him, and he's like, it works great, send me a hundred more. And uh, that's all it went. <laughs> so. Now, because everything's online and we're in the SolidWorks era, they can pretty much get their idea and every whole design and everything done in SolidWorks, send it to our engineer. Our engineer will put in uh, the right gearing, we'll make a sample and, and it goes to them and they, they test it. It used to be, as I'm walking through, um, somebody would catch me and go, hey, I got an idea for this. Can you just send me a motor? I don't care what the shaft is. I just need 10 RPM at 12 volts DC or I need 20 volts DC, so I have a little more power, but I want it to be this. Sure, okay, I'd make one up real quick, and then that's when we do this, and then it would come back with a drawing. I brought up everything so that way there's a statute of limitations for a test. Hey, sir, is there any Cesaro? He'll send me this from William. And say now, now make me another ten samples. But here's all the dimensions I want. So that was for Judge Dredd. This is dual rotation. And that actually started life. That we, we used it in Judge Dredd and all of our oscillators, the, the ones that would go back and forth. That started life as a water softener motor. <laughs> so uh, echo. Echo Water would buy tens of thousands of those. And then the two holes that I used for the pinions to run the counter rotating shaft, well, those originally mounted a switch that would have a cam to turn on and off for your water softener. So that's where it started life. And then uh, the oscillator came out. There was a massage therapist that approached my dad and said, I need a motor to go back and forth because I'm going to put long brushes on it so it'll just gently stroke somebody's back like a peacock does. <laughs> so my dad, my dad developed the oscillator and then you have one engineer at Williams that gets a hold of it. Another engineer at Williams gets a hold of it. They're like, oh, I want that in this next game. So Adam's family hand. Um, no, oh, teed off in Premier, the, 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 the yeah, come on, Big Hertz, glove motor and Big Hertz. Uh, so, yeah, those, everyone needed a, a, an oscillator motor. So it was fun. So I got a follow up question. So you, you mentioned that some of these requests, they're, they're telling you RPMs they want. Uh, are they often telling you how much torque they want? Or do yeah. you negotiate or what do you do? Yeah, well, sometimes it's vague because you don't know. There's not a whole lot of torque needed in a pinball machine because it's more for animation, typically. Yeah, but like the thing hand has a certain Exi weight it's going to lift. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Then they'll they'll say, hey, we, and it usually it's through trial and error. They'll say, hey, it didn't work real good, so can you give me something with more torque? So we'll put a bigger DC on it or a little more torque here, AC. Um, so anyway, uh, this was the first. Speaking one. of the. The, the feathers thing. Terminator 2.
Speaking of that feather thing, didn't Grandpa also design the motor that went in the vibrating beds? Yeah, that was that was the multi Magic fingers. Yeah, that was but that was a motor only. We would take just the motor with two end caps on it and a, a counterweight on it, and uh, magic fingers. Uh, so the porter next to the machine uh, in, in your hotel. hotel room when you put it in, that was our motors in there too. Um, I think the last ones we did, uh, there, there's a guy, there was a real, a real estate lawyer in Miami, Florida that bought it and wanted to resurrect it. And we were selling them, selling him motors. And, uh, and it just didn't, it just didn't fly. So I don't even know. Yeah, we haven't sold to them since probably 2000, late 90s, 2000. Here's a, another one you can, Adams family hand motor, and then this was the That's quick right. drawings for the bookcase, the bookcase motor. So those are the two drawings that we would have gotten for Adams family. No other really notes or on any other stuff like that. All right. From the industry, I, we're far enough away. We're an hour north in Racine, Wisconsin, so people don't want to make the the trip, I guess, because they're you know, living down here. So, um, but yeah, I, I grew up going to the the Conrad Hilton as a little kid for the uh, the MOA shows that they would have. And, uh, <laughs> My dad would have to fill you in on those. Uh, one, the, uh, well, uh, the one time that I did throw up on an airplane was the night after uh, in New Orleans, being at the hospitality suite for the, the Day to East guys. I'd always get invited to those. And uh, we uh, were naming the hurricanes. We had all of Pat O'Brien's, which is a restaurant in, in Bur on Bourbon Street. We were up to Hurricane Pitcher N. We were naming the hurricanes, and we just got absolutely blotto. Um, and I, the next day, I had to fly back home and threw up on an airplane. Never, <coughs> never did that before, no, I haven't done it since. Another interesting story was uh, Guns N' Roses pinball, when that uh, Stern first had that. We were in Las Vegas, got invited to the hospitality suite, and met Slash. All I could think was, I've never seen this much hair. I just, incredible, the amount of hair that that guy <laughs> his face, the, the hat, and, but just fantastic. them to adopt it would be brushless DC technology digitally controlled which would be would, would add a whole different element to the gameplay as well yeah, some some manufacturers do the game manufacturers um, do that um, brushless DC you have to pass that along but as far as not how the, the you know the motor needs to turn things makes things rotate so they'll, they'll keep doing that. Um, maybe it's not so much what, but the how. Well, going back to the, it's, it's a little more sterile now than what it used to be. I don't have that intimate relationship with the engineers at Stern or Jersey Jack. They take our model from our website and they'll design it up, tell us, you know, and have all the things, they'll even have it so it's designed into their assembly and they just make this, and then we'll send them a sample, and then they send us any changes, and then it's production, boom. So that, that intimate, you know, so it's more of the, the, the how has changed, not so much the what or 
and what it's doing. Does that answer the question? I'm here. Why are they not doing that? Well, the, the biggest thing is expense at this point. Uh, brushless DC, more like the one that I sent around, is probably Twice. one and a half times what our motor and gearbox would be. Okay. Um, so the, the biggest challenge is expense. Oh. Volume, maybe, maybe volume will help. The other thing is the, the fear it's getting, now they have to work with the which control side of things. The control side of things in the electronics. Um, getting that step, so it'd be adding a step there where the motor, is, you know, AC motors are dumb, either they're on or off. Um, <laughs> DC motors too, but you can reverse them by reversing the polarity. Essentially not to You can stop it, you can reverse it, you can hold it, you can change the speed, and you know where the location of the shaft is at all the time, because uh, it's got a built-in encoder. So it's, it's a lot, <clears throat> lot smarter application. In some cases, it does eliminate the gearbox, which you don't like to see, because there's our gear manufacturer, Mike Stanky. for a LED emergency lighting manufacturer. Well, that goes into Bay Tech Games now, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Um, engineers, I was walking down the hallway, another case of the engineer says, hey, you got just a half-inch shaft out either side, and we got a bigger coupler, and we've turned on our shaft. Can you make a, a, a gear that we can just shove the shaft through and put a keyway in there, and it'll just save us so much? And I'm like, yeah, I can do that. How am I going to do that? And that's what I what I came up with. It was a, a hollow hollow gear and built-in spacers, and so we machine the machine uh, the casting out, and it saves them a ton of time. And they're happy to pay the extra. It's a new game uh, that's currently in development. Yeah. You know, <laughs> a great question. When it's in development, they put a fake name on it, so even their, all their internal people don't even know, and except for them. So suppliers don't know. So it might be, I know they came out with an axe throwing game, and it was all something, you know, had just some yeah. unrelated, you know, like jam sandwich game, you know, something like that. Goofy. My favorite one was furry hats. <clears throat> That one, another another one of our customers is Lobster Sports. So if you see um, tennis ball machines, tennis ball machines, we don't shoot out the ball, but we stir the ball. <laughs> That's what this motor does, and we'll make the shoot go up and down or left and right. So we do about uh, seventeen thousand of these motors for one manufacturer. Who uses this many tennis ball machines? But I'm not going to question it. You um, just did. Well, I know. I just did figuratively. <laughs> it's my son for you. So. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I could go on and on and on. I brought a bunch of parts if, you know, wanted to see how the evolution of, you know, things. Motors, motor design. Yeah, kind of motor design, gear, gear blanks, which, by the way, we're making our own gear blanks if you haven't heard. So instead of getting this stamped out, we're starting to machine it, so that's start of, of a gear and then when our gears get too expensive because there's a lot of parts to them and we're making a uh, powder metal and we don't have to do that but sometimes volume makes us do that so he 
He's our gear cutter, by the way. Yeah. We send him gear blanks and he cuts oh, them for us. Can you, so you don't do our pinion now. Um, yeah. Red. So yeah, so we'll get 12 foot bars of, of pinion and we cut them into small, small little gears called pinion. And I'm not going to do it. <coughs> so, where, where are we at on time? Oh, wait. Am I? I mean, I don't want to. Well, then. Eat up any <laughs> Are there any other questions, final questions, thoughts, concerns, conundrums, quarrels, <laughs> clarifications? Uh, we make them original for CERN and then for uh, Jersey Jack, but Marco, you know, still makes, we make them in, in quantity for Marco and other distributors. So if there's enough volume, you know, request it. So, I'm just, I'm here, I'll keep talking as long as you want me to talk, or I'm allowed to talk, or uh, if there's, yeah, thank you.